And so Gideon, that his name means warrior, one who cuts down trees. It means destroyer. His, that name, like when you look up the root of it, and I don't remember how I read it, but it, it has to do with Armageddon. It has, I, mean, and, I mean, Gideon was like a wild man, but he didn't see himself that way. But see, God tells us to call those things which be not as though they are. He's saying, listen, I'm going to prophesy over you, and I'm going to call you, and I'm going to keep speaking over you until you start seeing that, you, that and that you come into agreement with who I've called you to be. So we have got to, even tonight, we're going to pray, Lord, let me come out of agreement with the lies of the enemy that I have been believing. I'm always going to have a problem. I'm always going to have financial issues. I'm always going to, you know, have a, an addiction problem. That's baloney. That's the lie of the enemy. And so God is saying to you, I am removing the chaff of unbelief from our hearts that, was hindered, that hinders us. That's what happened to Gideon. He was removing the chaff of unbelief that was hindering his identity. And that's what we're going to pray about tonight. Lord, remove every part of my heart, every part that's hard, every chaff, every piece in me that's hindering me, that's causing unbelief. That's causing me and preventing me from seeing who I am in you and walking and fulfilling my destiny. Because God is raising up a Gideon 300 army who knows their God and will do great exploits. That's who we are. We're not this weak, pathetic-looking ch church lady kind of mentality when they, they show us on TV acting like idiots and that, you know, we're so religious and we have no love for the people. It's, it, you know, that, that has to shift. So God rescued Israel, and he rescued Gideon out of that unbelief. And so in Judges 6, 23 and 24, in the Amplified, it says that the Lord said to him, you know, peace be to you. Do not fear, and you will not die, Gideon. And there Gideon built an altar to the Lord and called it the Lord is peace, the shalom of the Lord. See, in that place of, of fearing, in that place of doubt, in that place of unbelief, the Lord said, I'm going to come and I'm going to reveal myself to you as Jehovah Shalom, as the God of peace who crushes the enemy under your feet, and that you will know my peace, and it will be a weapon of war that will cut the head of the enemy off. Because when you're operating in peace, even when hell is going around you, you have the upper hand. You're not battling in fear. You're not backing down. You're in peace because you have the word of the Lord and you're holding on to that. And that's what God is saying to us. You have to know him as the God of peace, the God of peace who cuts the head of the enemy, who will, uh, you know, just shatter every lie that the enemy has for us. And it's like this warring thing that, that God is releasing over us. And so, yeah, well, shalom means uh, soundness, welfare, peace, prosperity. It's a covenant of peace. In Judges 6.25, it says here, in the Amplified, that night the Lord said to Gideon, take your father's bull. <laughs> That's how it's worded. And the second bull, seven years old, and pull down the altar of Baal that your father has cut down. We got to cut off the bull or the BS, and that's the belief system that's been in our family line for so long that has kept us in bondage because it's a learned behavior. And we have to cut that off. And that's when he said he had to tear down the altars of Baal. He had to tear down the belief system, even the religious systems that might seem good, but the systems that we were brought up in that we know about that has kept us in bondage. See, we have to cut it off. And that's what he did. So Gideon destroyed the altar of Baal. And we have to destroy any ungodly belief, any ungodly altars that are in our lives that will hinder us from moving forward in this season. I don't know about you, but I want it. And so Gideon broke that, he broke that stronghold of the nation. He broke it. He broke, he tore down the false altar, altars and, and he delivered a nation. What are, we heard Jane Hammond, the nation could be your family, your neighborhood, your place of employment. He tore down. He tore down the lies. He tore down the generational curse. He tore down the strongholds, the lies. He tore it down. And he was afraid. But, but God gave him the strength, and he said, no, no, no. And that's what God is saying to us. We're all mighty men and women of courage. In our sphere of influence, he's saying, tear down those altars. Tear down the altars first in your heart, but tear it down in your family. Tear it down in your prayer time in the places of business because we have that authority. Now, I'm not telling you to go up to the person and start 
calling out a spirit or anything. I'm not telling you to do that. I'm telling you in your prayer time. But that, that word tear down means to destroy, to overthrow, and to pull down in pieces. And that's what God is calling us to do. And as you know, Gideon raised up the army. He, he raised up, um, you know, the Gideon 300 army that took out the enemy. And um, so I didn't want to go there. But I just wanted to really deal with the, the, our identity and us tearing down. Listen, there are word curses that you grew up with, you may have grown up with, where your parents, listen, they, listen, our parents all did the best that they could. I'm a parent. I did the best that I could, and you still mess up, right? But, but word curses that you believed, that you'll never amount to something or, you know, whatever it is. Uh, you know, we have to tear those down. That, that's what would limit us. So we want to break out of those limitations today because I prophesy over you, you are men and you are women of valor. You're more than a conqueror. You're courageous. You're powerful. We have the DNA of Christ in us. We have the mind of Christ. We have the spirit of dynamite, that dunamis power in us, exosia power. We have kratos, that, that power, that it's a power gift. That's who we are. We have the spirit of love, of, of forgiveness. We walk in the love of God and the kindness of God. It's the kindness of the Lord that brings the person to repentance. It's his kindness. He's not there with a mallet waiting to bop us over the head every time we mess up. That's not God. God is saying, know your identity. Know that you're a son and you're a daughter. And the Father loves you. And he wants you whole. Don't be ashamed. Don't think you're stuck. I'm telling you right now, we're going to break off any, any time, any area of your life if you feel like you're stuck. Come on, let's stand up. God is raising up a company of Gideon warrior heroes to do great exploit for him. Amen. Amen. So, Lord, we just, we just praise you and we thank you. And, um, you know, you, you can make your way forward. You know, we're not going to be long here, but I just really feel like we need to renounce a couple of belief systems here. And um, you can, okay. And, um, Lord, we, we just, God, you know our heart. And Holy Spirit, we just ask you to shine your light in areas where we have not truly believed you or we might be in unbelief. God, we ask you to show us our heart where we don't see ourselves as a son or a daughter, where we don't see ourselves as one who is capable of being loved, or, or maybe we may have disqualified ourselves. Lord, we ask you to forgive us. Lord, we ask you to show us who we are through your lens. Let us see ourselves through your eyes, oh God, that it's your desire for us to walk as mighty warriors, as soldiers of the Lord, because we are the end time army. We are that Gideon end time army that will not lap and we will not walk in fear, but we will trust in you with all of our heart and lean not on our own understanding. Lord, I pray for all of those, you know, us, many of us, we have stuff going on in our lives. But Lord, I thank you that you provide a way of escape out of every situation that we're in. Holy Spirit, we just thank you for your presence. We thank you, Lord, just like we, I was reading earlier today with the Bible study in Nehemiah 4, how Sam Bala and Tobiah, every time they were trying to move forward, they, they were trying to frustrate their plans. Well, we say no to that. We say no to the enemy thwarting and, and getting us off track. God, we just thank you. That's your desire for us to walk in the fullness of who you called us to. So, Lord, I thank you that you are developing and you're helping us all here with identity. You're showing us who we are in you. And our desire is that we walk with you and that we see ourselves in a way that we have never seen ourselves. And I don't care how long we're saved either because that's what he's doing for all of us. Because we, none of us walk on water here and we all have stuff that sometimes that we just don't see ourselves through God's eyes because of circumstances that have really hurt our hearts. So, Lord, show us. And we thank you, Lord, that it's your desire to take us by the hand 
and walk us through because your word promises that you never leave us nor forsake us. Thank you, Lord.